We can smooch right here. <laughs> that, children, is what's known as a jerkosaurus. <laughs> You're right. I'm a chur. Meet your dad. He's not as crazy as he looks. Every kid loves dinosaurs, I think, for the reason that uh, they were real monsters. It's amazing to envision those things having walked the earth at some point. If you still follow them, you realize that it's an entire world that's just gone. And it was is a world without roads or telephone poles. I was a character designer on Dinosaur. For the modelers, I would do the orthographic drawings. But my second career choice is paleontologist. Over the years, I've been getting more involved with it. We did a lot of research before we even started animating the characters. And then we learned, wow, I have to talk. Once you enter the realm of talking animals, you're in a whole different world. And the challenge was to make you accept that. The key word is not real, but believable. You know, and those are two very, very different things. We did the studies of what the muscle structure of an iguanodon's face actually looked like. Yes, they had beaks, but it was hard to do charm with beak. There were some early tests done with the beaks talking. It, it at best looked like two coconuts clapping together in the front of this thing's face. A maladar, the jerkosaurus. We went to an alternative scientific approach and put a little skin, let's call it a lip, over the beak. <laughs> when we animated the characters talking, we made sure that when the character smiles and pulls the corner of his mouth back, that actual muscle that does it bulges, and you see it. He looks just like me. <laughs> it's only so much you can do with that rectangular shoebox of a head. And silhouette value is extremely important. That is, if we colored in the shape of this thing's heads in black marker, would Nera look like Aladar, or would Aladar look like Crone? We had to really make them look very different. Who are you? Uh, Aladar. His basic body plan maintained fairly true to a real iguanodon. What that gave us was something that was malleable and we could get a range out of. It's like a hero character is usually a little bit more plain because that way you can get joy, you can get sadness, you've got a, a nice clean palette to begin with. The eyes on, on the characters, we, we cheated a little bit by bringing them more forward and making them binocular. Huh? Oh. Stay out of my way! <laughs> Chrome, we really beefed up his chest and his arms, and, and sometimes we even lengthened fing fingers so that they would get a longer, you know, sort of proud stride out of them. Chrome, in a way, wears the mantle of his leadership like, like a suit, and sometimes that's going to be uncomfortable for him, and then sometimes he's going to use that to intimidate, and in Chrome's design, he has a very meaty, thick neck. I went straight down to the, uh, the modeling department. We had them add a control to his neck, which allowed me to hand wobble his neck. And he would do it to intimidate me. Watch yourself, boy. Don't worry. That's how my brother treats newcomers. No matter how charming they are. That was the original idea, was we would pattern Nira after Audrey Hepburn, but uh, it was mostly for inspiration. We wanted to make her graceful and feminine. You don't normally think of a dinosaur like that, so that was a huge challenge. In fact, some of the first walks I did were a little over the top, a little bit too much baba boom, and we had to scale that back too. But you have to start somewhere. I think we got a good combination there of getting the grace and power. <laughs> <laughs> Oops! <laughs> Sorry. No, you, you first. So the decision was made as far as the iguanodons and a lot of the other dinosaurs that we're just going to cheat, and we're going to take the the beak away, give them lips, and give them the ability to articulate sounds um, in that manner. Um, this really wasn't an option with Ema. To my mind, the biggest problem with Ema was getting a complete range of expression out of her. But we ended up with a character who actually has a rigid beak. What I ended up doing was looking for something in the world that actually resembled that, and it turned out to be that there is something, and I, and I went and looked at parrots. And parrots do, in fact, talk and they are able to create a, a remarkable variety of sounds. Bailey, you got big feet, just give them a kick. Yeah! Oh, I couldn't possibly. Wow, Bailey, she's a brachiosaur. 
people. They're like the gentle giants of the dinosaur world. But her body was, was also fun. I mean, it was just like, well, how big can we make her? And it wasn't really until I saw something uh, on a construction site where I saw one of these huge cranes and feeling the, the weight of this machine really gave me an appreciation for, okay, this is the size that we're talking about. The thing with the neck, uh, there's many theories that they could never even bend their head down because of the pressure uh, to, of the blood, it would pop their head clean off. I, for one, am not willing to die here. And that's where the beauty of animation is, you know, we're just going to cross the line. You know, we have to make it entertaining. Oh, my goodness. The big conotaurs, Tyrannosaurus rexes, were actually not um, predators, but scavengers. I guess there's a certain thinking that the, the, the Tyrannosaurus rex, for instance, it could smell out carcasses like 30 miles. So literally, it could find its meal and not have to worry about being wounded in the process of trying to bring that animal down. You know, that's a certain theory, and it's, it's, it could very well be. I didn't particularly like that one, but I thought that kind of makes the conator a bit of a wimp. I don't really want that guy to be doing that. So, uh, you know, we really sort of stress, get this guy to be a real tour de force. Let's make this guy as vicious, as, you know, driven by hunger at all times, and we'll do anything to eat. As a kid, you have all your dinosaur toys, and you line them all up, and you inject personality in them. It's funny, as a kid, my Iguanodon toy had more attitude than my Tyrannosaur toy. You have ideas how they sort of acted, just by the way they look. There's a, a certain strength of the character because they actually existed at one time in our, in our past. And I think, you know, they, these monsters, they were like these walking monsters, and I think kids identify like they actually really were there. And they're not here now, or anything even close to that big is kind of fascinating that they're here they were here and then what happened to them too why did they just suddenly go away i mean even if they clone them and bring it back to life and we're not going to get that world back you know? we can't stay here <laughs>